to the live stream. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, I'm Yaya, and I'm excited to introduce my newest fabric collection here. Um, so it is the fall 2023 fabric collection that I created with Cosplay Fabrics that is available exclusive at Joanne through their stores as well as online. And uh, yeah, we do these like once um, once or twice, well, we do these twice a year actually. And um, it's been really fun. And so we're gonna take a few minutes and let everybody come in. Um, I just posted about going live and hopefully you're all trickling in. I see some of you are watching on Facebook and others are watching on YouTube. So thank you very much for being here. Um, Anthony's asking, how, how are you? I'm pretty good. I'm going on a trip in two days. So everything is a bit crazy and packing and everything. But as always, it's, you know, what else is new? But I'm really excited to be able to fit in this stream and intro you guys to my fabrics because we have some really great fabrics for this collection. Uh, we also have some rebuys, which means um, collect, like previous collections that did very well that uh, Joanne rebought and will be, you know, getting more yardage. And I think some of the rebuys are going to really make you guys happy. So we'll definitely talk about that. So uh, let's see. Ruby is from, Atl from Atlanta, uh, watching from YouTube. Thank you so much. <laughs> Fan service, Renji. Hi, thanks for being here. <laughs> um, Angry Moose is asking, "How are you?" I'm good. I'm. I. I was. You know me. I love talking about fabrics. You know, and so especially the ones that we've been able to uh, bring has been really fun. Canvas cosplay. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, says, "Love the brocades of previous seasons." Yes, there will be more brocades too. I think the brocade. The brocades are sort of you know, some of the most high quality and nice fabrics that I personally have ever had a hand in developing. So um, I really want to continue to offer them. And uh, Aki Raymond Cosplay asks, is there one piece you are super excited to share? There is, and I saved it for last. It's the last fabric. So, uh, and it's really worth it. So you should definitely stick around for it. But yes, the last fabric I will present is incredible. So yes, wait for it. But uh, I just like while people are still coming in, I'm just going to really quickly let you guys know about this fabric collection. For those of you who are not familiar, since 2017, I have had a uh, Cosplay by Yaya Han fabric collection available in Joanne. So the, um, the company that I'm partnered with to make the fabrics is um, cosplayfabrics.com. And uh, they're very passionate about fabrics as well. They have been in the fabric industry for decades. Uh, this is me visiting one of my fabric collections a few years ago, and um, it's just still always so exciting whenever I go into the store and I can see my fabrics. Um, very, very, very cool. And then along with it are like some like McCall patterns that I've also designed. So it's just really nice to be able to make cosplay um, focused products for um, mass retail to make it more available to everyone. And so I'm really excited to see like the developments we've been able to do over the years. We've definitely done a lot of foils and a lot of different genres of fabrics and um, a lot of we present a huge selection of fabrics to the Joanne buyers who will then pick which ones they want to sell in their stores. So there is definitely kind of a long process for each collection and we have to um, plan several months in advance. It's almost like a year in advance. Like we already are presenting and they're already picking fabrics that will come out now like a year <laughs> from then. So um, that is how this business works. Uh, and it's been very interesting for me as well to learn it and to, you know, 
keep in tune with what it is that we as costumers need. And um, I think over the years, you guys have been very vocal about certain types of fabrics. And so we have been encouraging Joanne more to rebuy certain fabrics from previous collections so that they will be more available throughout you know, a longer time because my fabrics come out as a seasonal collection, which means they're not stocked continuously in the year. Like the Joanne buys a certain yardage for each season and then it sells and then it, it won't come back unless they rebuy it. So I think these types of live streams are really important because I'm telling you guys what to expect and I can help you prepare for your projects and also give you some idea so okay so i and i'm trying to keep up with all comments all of you are super awesome i will answer some more um questions like uh after the presentation so to speak and um so we will definitely have chance to chat so okay so let's do you, you want to look some fabrics should we get started so i'm actually going to start with um I see people here that I know. Hi. Hi, Jess. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, says you released this really thin black pleather that's absolutely heavenly. Anything like that with other colors? There are some. There are a couple. Um, I think we have a purple and a light pink, but they were like a couple collections back, so they may have been sold out. I don't know, but we did try to, we did release a few in different colors. Um, but anyway, let's look at some fabric. So the first one I'm going to show you is a rebuy, but this is a really cool rebuy that you have asked for. So now more yardage of the basket weave is going to be available. And I think we have a video that's going to show better. Here we go. So this is the basket weave that is heavily inspired by Kylo Ren from uh, Star Wars, but it is also fantastic for any type of like rough spun um, robes and um, like, I'm like, hey, all the Final Fantasy robes, hello. Uh, so the basket weave has been around since almost the first collection. I think uh, we had it back in like 2018. That was the earliest. And Joanne has rebought it several times. And so I'm really happy that they have rebought it again. So, because this is a fabric that everyone asks about, and it's always like, where's the basket weave? And because people have to buy much, a lot of yardage of it to make something. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so excited. I was like, yes! <laughs> Jess says, I use this for my Sith robe. Yes, this, this is definitely the like really fantastic, um, just authentic looking fabric. So, basket weave is back. Um, as you know, it frays pretty easily. And so I always recommend either using an overlock or doing um, a basting stitch around each edge before you sew it down. So you basically, you, you do a wide stitch around each edge so that it's not fraying like crazy. Um, but if you have an overlock, a serger, this is a great fabric to use on. But it just it just looks fantastic. It's a great weight and um, you know, whatever you make with it is looks fantastic. Awesome. Okay, okay, okay. So um, and then the cosplay fabrics team is also here to answer questions. So you know, I think they answered like uh, some of the questions already. So the next fabrics I'm going to introduce, um, these are also, I believe, rebuys, but these are new colors. So we are gonna have some new uh, stretch materials, but in very interesting colors. So this is the lightweight stretch in teal. And it is like this really cool uh, greenish teal. And um, it's very, very thin, very stretchy. It's incredibly comfortable on you. And um, we have released it in some other colors and we just wanted to have some more interesting choices. Uh, so this one will be really great as a base item. And, you know, as you can see, like it has like a nice sheen to it. Um, we also have the light stretch in purple, which looks very blue on my screen, but there you can see actually the, um, the actual color. It is a true royal purple. So it will be fantastic for, you know, any lightweight 
leggings or um, bodysuit parts or even like a drapey cape or something. And so the lightweight stretch, like we always pride ourselves in creating high quality stretch so that it is, even though it is very lightweight, it is a high quality and um, it will, you know, last, like it will, it will stand up to some wear and tear, um, but then still be breathable because it's so light. So rounding out the um, lightweight stretch, we have some really interesting neon colors. So I feel like this neon pink is very current. It is definitely very Barbie at the moment. Like, can you say, is this not like her, you know, rollerblade outfit <laughs> fabric already? So um, it is a core, it's, it's a little coral, but in that video, it looks more reddish than it is in person. Like I'm looking at it in person and it is truly like that neon, like highlighter hot pink. So I think it's very, very cool. So, uh, and then of course we also did the highlighter, um, highlighter neon yellow. So like I said, if you wanted to make something Barbie related, I got you covered. It's basically like the color of her rollerblades. So, um, super fun. Anthony asking, did I see the Barbie movie? Of course I saw the Barbie movie. Absolutely. I'm going to see it again for sure. But I think like these lightweight um, stretch materials, they're very versatile and uh, definitely very current. <laughs> Alrighty, so what do you guys think so far? Interesting, well, are you ready to see some new fabrics? So the next two fabrics I'm gonna present are pretty interesting. And let's see, I'm curious what your re reaction is. So this is the Sculpted Weave Ivory. It is a very interesting lightweight material that has like a 3D effect to it. And then one side has um, a pearlescent sheen to it. So uh, it definitely drapes very well. And um, it's almost like a like outerwear, like a um, jacket material but it's very thin. It does not have a stretch to it though. So just be aware of that. So I feel like it would be very good for any, you know, if you wanted to add interesting texture to a costume and um, the, the finish on it, I feel like would definitely take paint and airbrush very well. Uh, so, because it does actually have a sort of like, um, uh, how do you say, like a smooth finish on it. So I believe you can paint it fairly well. So yeah, it's definitely one of the most interesting fabrics that we've created. I just sort of like love the texture of it. You know, I just am trying to imagine some really interesting things that you could do. I feel like you could go either somewhat futuristic modern with it, but also um, maybe go the fantasy route and yes, just saying that it would be amazing for Burning Man, definitely, like very post-apocalyptic. Um, and we are definitely offering it also, woo, <laughs> we're also offering it in a silver. So this is the sculpted uh, weave in a darker, almost like, um, not, not necessarily gunmetal, but definitely a darker uh, silver. So you have some options here to play with. I bet you could de-stress it. I bet you could, you know, um, maybe even burn the edges and create something interesting with it. Um, Mia says Emma Frost, definitely. I can see Emma Frost. Uh, so yeah, so those are new, completely new fabrics that we developed. The next one is also new and this one is super cool. We've done something similar before with scales, but this is a stretch fur texture. So it is stretchy. It is very stretchy, like very stretchy <laughs> four way, but it has this very interesting fur look to it. And um, the backing is really buttery soft. 
so we did a similar fabric to this with scales and I actually used it for my um, Dungeon Fighter Online Neo Ranger costume and I really loved it. Uh, so I think it's really great that we're able to offer a second type fabric and fur is like more generic and I just think it has such an interesting texture. But then the fact that it's stretchy, you can like make a slinky bodysuit with it if you wanted to, but then have the fur texture. So yeah, it'd be very, very cool. Hi, Melting Mirror. Yay. So happy to see. Hi, Indra. Hi, Scott. It's so nice to see everyone. So I think this, this is very fun. Very cool. All right. So continuing on, we have another um, new, is this, I think this is new. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a similar, like, uh, it's called the shiny snake print in black. So it also is the very stretchy, but it has a subtle um, snake print on it that I think is actually very elegant. And so you can choose to either use the fur or use the snake print. And so I, I just what I just really love the technology that goes into making this fabric. I, I love that you can sort of create this type of tonal, like like color on color um, effect that is like really subtle with the light, and you know it it doesn't look printed or anything. It really looks like the fabric is you know just came like that. Uh, Terry is saying this would be great for belts and accessories. Absolutely. I think so. So, I mean, this is, this is why we do these streams to hopefully give you ideas and we'd love to hear your ideas because they definitely help us in the future as well. Um, we'd love to see what you use the fabrics for too, always, but I think this is lovely. All right. So there's still a lot more to come, but we're just kind of going to go through the, um, like the the foils and vinyls and such. The next fabric is a rebuy, and it's one that has definitely been much requested. It is the soft distressed pleather in dark brown. So this sold like hotcakes, um, I believe the last collection. And you know, as you can see, it is also the four way stretch, so you can very easily cover foam with it for your belts or you know if you wanted to make a cincture or like you know um grease for your arms or you know some something like that and uh you can also use it as is you can make pants with it you know for like your D, &D costumes so it's just sort of a staple um uh, mia says i use this for belts and armor and yeah so joanne was happy with it. They rebought it. So there's more yardage coming in stores. And by the way, even though this says it's the fall 2023 collection, all of these fabrics should be arriving in stores like now. <laughs> so it really comes out in the summer. Um, and I believe a lot of these are on the joanne.com website already. So you do have access to these and you can definitely make a trip to your Joanne. Um, you know, in the next weekend or so and check what is in, what is around. And apparently you can dye this as well. So see, this, this is why I love, I love hearing your ideas of what you can do with fabrics. <laughs> Jasmine is like my wallet. I know, I know, I know. Um, this is me with so many things. Okay, so the next two fabrics are brand new, are really, really, really fun. So uh, let's see, this is, this is the stretch liquid droplet. Isn't it fun? It looks like it has water drops on it, but it is like built into the fabric. <laughs> um, it is again four way stretch, has a really beautiful gold finish, and but it has like this additional texture on it that's sort of a little random, that's really interesting. So imagine making something with it that you know you just you need a gold fabric like the character has a gold whatever and but then if you use this it gives it like additional dimension and texture and plus the gold is such a pretty pretty gold um but i just love the droplets like that's just such a cool design i think you know super nice and stretchy 
And so again, cover all the things with it, cover yourselves with it. I'm using the craft room as like, OMG. So yeah, I just, isn't it neat? It just has like this cool effect. So um, we are offering this droplet fabric in gold, but also in black. So everyone, you know, I think black is certainly the staple. And so all of a sudden this is like, very Blade Runner and very different effect, right? Like the gold sort of has more of like a fantasy element to it. But then as soon as you see it in black, it just changes the usage of the fabric completely. So um, in dress size, it gives me Hellfire Gala vibes. Yeah, so it's, it's just really neat. Again, just the technology of being able to create this kind of effect on these four-way stretch fabrics, I think it's just fantastic. And just it's so soft too. It really feels great on your skin. So I I think that's really important to have fabric that actually feels really good against your skin because you have to wear it for hours. So I mean, look at that. That's just neat. I love that. I love how it like shines in the light. <laughs> the cyberpunk synth face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Eleanor says I'm torn between both colors. I need both. No, right? Like, uh, we're going to start with gold and black. You know, if it does really well, you know, I want to add more colors, you know. So those are a lot of our um, foils and leathers, but I still have another stack of fabrics to show you. So we're going to now go into the brocades. Um, I definitely like I know the the like some people love the brocades, other people get more use out of the the you know more um foils and, and pleather type fabrics. Um for us it's important to offer both so that we have the variety. So the next one is a new fabric that is called the floral brocade ivory pink. And so I think what's striking about it is the color and again the 3d effect so you have the fabric that is spun with um a uh with a, a floral pattern on it but then it is also um has another layer of uh florals on top of it and i think the colors are really attractive it's this ivory cream and these pinks and fuchsias and i think it definitely is you know very regal but also has a lot of um, fashion usage so i just love that we're able to do more of these types of florals you know so and it's very nice weight as well so we also are offering it in um black so this this is like the black and pink version of it this is a rebuy and it did so well that um we created it in ivory and pink as well so this, this one is just very, I don't know, like very Spikes family and very um, just regal queen, you know? So I I think like, just, it just makes me happy that these fabrics are, like I know they're high quality. I have used um, uh, one of them before for my own Spikes family costume, like a, a variation of this. So I, really like i like that they look expensive and that they are high quality so very pretty uh okay so continuing on with the brocades we have a couple of rebuys these ha have been pretty much best sellers like this is sort of the bridgerton effect carrying through nowadays it's the um you know Prince, uh queen charlotte so this is the four seasons french brocade um this came out, I believe, in 2021, and we offered it in a few colors. I just did so incredibly well, and people just kept asking for it. So we are continuing making it. It is a heavyweight brocade, truly very heavy weight, which means you can sculpt it. And so you can really create some fantastical, you know, draping effects with it and make beautiful gowns with it. Um, and I, in fact, used a uh, colorway of this to make my Daki costume from Demon Slayer. So I certainly can attest to the usage of it. So we are bringing back the blue Four Seasons. And we are also bringing back the mint, which I think is a really fantastic 
colorway. So it is just beautiful, very elegant. Um, the flowers on it and sort of like the fact that it's not all flowers, but it has like really these different um, vines and uh, stems going through it with the leaves. I think that's what makes it fun. I, I love the spacing of it too. It's like not too closely spaced. Um, it just is like, it's just very elegant. Sometimes it's like a fabric is, it's like too many flowers all at once. I think it, it sort of cheapens it a bit, but this is like very well thought out. It looks like almost like a tapestry. So hi, Jahara, thanks so much for coming. And she says, I love your brocades. Thank you, I love them too. So these are super fun and great rebuy. So you can definitely um, plan out your costumes for uh, the, the fall season with it. The next two are also rebuys and I'm so happy they did because these I think are some of the most versatile fabrics we offer. And that would be the Byzantine metallic brocades. Every time I show this fabric, everyone freaks over it because they're just so much usage you know like the colors are it's like it looks truly it's it's like exotic looking it really looks like you know you can make something from different uh just from different fantasy settings with it it um is a little it's definitely more lightweight than the four seasons brocades and the previous brocades i showed so this one is just, yeah, like very uh, luxurious, um, but just very versatile because it's such a nice dark gold, you know, and with the black showing through, it's, yeah, definitely one of my favorites that we have ever done. And I'm just happy that Joanne is rebuying it. So of course, with the black and gold, we also have the gold and red Byzantine. So just take a look at, just that effect. This is just from my little like, you know, home uh, webcam. But just the colors on it, the way that it's almost tonal. Um, so you can like use it to signify a solid space. You know, if the design has a solid space, uh, you can use it to sort of add way more texture and pattern to it without it being too overwhelming or something. So um, I really, really love it. It's fantastic. So really, really fun. Uh, so now we have a couple more left and these are super cool. We have a new brocade coming and I think this one is gonna just be, I'm very curious what you guys think. So this is called, let's see. This is the chain link brocade. Look at that, look at that. So it is like this beautiful champagne gold color. Uh, we are calling it the chain link brocade in ivory and gold, um, but it truly is, it's like the, the basis, the, the base fabric has a texture to it. And then you have these gorgeous um, chain link circles um, patterned throughout and they are sort of um, scattered throughout and interconnect with each other and so again it's like it's a gorgeous fabric that can sort of work for a solid space but you know like instead of a solid fabric you can use this but it just adds instantly so much luxury to your costume i i love fabrics that like elevate your costumes like okay you're doing the work for me i don't have to try to make it super fancy because the fabric is super fancy so i'm definitely curious what you guys think and what you might want to make with it i'm i'm like feeling some lord of the rings vibes or <laughs> anthony says i hit see in mickey so everybody sees something different jesse hi good to see you yeah see like i knew you would like this fabric so I think it's very beautiful. And, and again, it's like um, nice and heavy. So make a drapey skirt with it or a cape or, or cape dress. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see. We have one more rebuy brocade. Um, a lot of brocades, but like I said, Joanne loves them from us. We're, you know, we have really great sources to make them. So I, I'm glad that we can be a good source of brocades for, for them. 
This is the Duchess Brocade in ivory and gold and also has some pinks in it. This is definitely, um, I think, one of the most beautiful brocades that we've come out with. And I've been dying to use it for something myself. Uh, so it, I just love this combination of colors where like, like, depending on the light, you know, you can see the pinks in it, but then you can also see some very, um, like a little bit of blue. Can you see like the, the grayish blue within it too? And of course the gold outlines kind of peek through and it all sort of really complements each other. <laughs> Jahar is like, I need that immediately. So I think these are all really gorgeous fabrics that I'm, just excited to see what you guys can make with. And obviously they've done well enough that we've been able to bring them back, which makes me really happy, you know? So, cause I, I always want to make, <laughs> Omitsuki says I need 20 yards of it, thanks. Okay, <laughs> maybe if you go to like three Joann's you can gather 20 yards. Um, but yeah, we, we want to definitely continue to try to encourage them to rebuy fabrics as well as mix in new fabrics. Um, so that we can sort of continue to serve the community. Because I think sometimes like you see a fabric and you're like, well, I wanna make something with it, but like for the first year, you don't know what to make with it, you know? So it's like, sometimes it takes a little while before the idea strikes. And um, by that point, I always hate it when the fabric is like sold out and no longer coming back, you know, like that's the worst. So I, want to hopefully be able to continue bring some of the ones back that have consistently done well and that can continuously um be used for different projects <laughs> i mean i'm going to cover my entire house in that <laughs> i love it i'm so glad <laughs> okay all right so now we are down to the last fabric the one that i told you that I'm so excited about. And I really hope this ushers in like a new era of the types of fabrics we can bring to you. I hope that this one will fly off the shelves so that Joanne will buy a whole bunch of others in with the same technique. Cause this technique, it blew me away when I first saw it. And there's so many possibilities with it. I know I'm just like building it up, super building it up, but I hope it shows up on camera very well, but let's see. How do I show it? How do I show it? Okay, I'm gonna show it. So this is the texture two-tone brocade. It changes colors. Like it really changes colors. Like depending on where you are, it looks gold, but then it looks blue and it shifts almost like magically. And when I saw this, like it's the way that it's woven, you know, the, the strands that are woven through in what pattern they're woven through, it truly color changes. And let me tell you, there are like different color variations you can do with it. Can you imagine sunset colors? Can you imagine like a purple and a pink? You know, can you imagine like a green and a blue or something? There's so many things that you can do with it. And this pattern is very abstract, uh, which I think is really nice because it sort of can be versatile and be used for different things. Um, and it also can be used on both sides. So you could flip it over and it is like, it looks beautiful on both sides. So it doesn't need a lining. You know, you can literally just like make cape with it and it's totally fine. It's great on its own. Just finish the edges, you're done. Um, <laughs> on your mark, get set. <laughs> I just love some of these comments. So this was somebody, uh, Thrandra robe, uh, Indra. Yeah, that's what we, this is elven robes right here. You know, it truly is like magical looking robes. and. I've seen samples of other fabrics using this technique and I literally, I just want to plaster it everywhere. So really, really hoping this does well because this will mean that we can present other fabrics that are similar, but in maybe different colors and different patterns to join. And I think, I mean, look at this, just look at it. It is just so pretty the way it catches the light and you know, 
So I, I'm. This is the one that I've been so excited about. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at. <laughs> I'm looking at some of your comments. They're amazing. Um, so I I don't know. I'd love to hear what you might want to make with it, what it inspires you to do. I feel like this has so many fashion usages as well. Um, just, you know, I personally, I would love to make like a really cool jacket or something with this. Um, but I, I think like working in this industry, what it, okay, I'm just going to wear it because it's so pretty. Look at this. I'm just going to be in this. Somehow matches my room too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's just been exciting to sort of work in this industry and get to see the advances of fabric creation, you know, how they can use different techniques to make new fabrics. Um, Jahara asks, when will these be available in the stores? They should be available now. I believe the cosplay fabrics team can. Um, can uh, 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 tell you exact dates, but they these fabrics have all been shipped out to the stores already. So it's up to the stores to set them, to like put them out and display them. But um, I definitely am encouraging you to go check them out in person because a lot of them are so beautiful and like you wanna definitely feel them and such, um, feel the weight of it, think about how it drapes, you know, play with it. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. And um, <laughs> yes, yeah, I don't know what I'm making, but I'm making something, yeah. Uh, so I think it, oh my God, Mitsuku says, ordering some now for my CL cosplay. Good, yes, great. I If it can definitely, yeah, actually these are CL colors, totally would work for CL. So I, I think that is what I'm just the most excited about is to see what you guys make with it. Please always tag me in what you make, tag Cosplay Fabrics or Yaya Han Fabrics. Uh, thanks, Jess. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everybody, for being here, seriously. Um, so, yeah, these are the things that we are up to. Um, we definitely, we like, I did a presentation at Joanne um, in March for the spring 2024 collection. So hopefully we will have some more really cool, interesting fabrics in store with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so excited, it's like just going to Joanne now. <laughs> um, Jonathan is asking, what fabrics did you use for your Daki cosplay? So I used uh, one of the I use one of the Four Seasons fabrics, but the Fuchsia version. So like a different colorway, but I used it for her, um, I guess her Obi belts. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but I'm, I'm here and I'm around to take some questions if you have any, or if you have some other, <laughs> I'm gonna add more bags to my Joanne shopping bag collection, <laughs> love it. So, but yeah, definitely, you know, I'm, I'm here. I love to see your excitement and you are definitely the ones that are making me excited to keep going. The whole team is always very excited to work on cosplay stuff um, because I feel like we are definitely the um, new generation of SOAS and we do some very interesting new things with, with fabrics. Um, Let's see, Colleen is asking, will you making new patterns soon? Um, I hope so. There has been a little bit, like the patterns have slowed down just like because McCall restructured um, that the way that they buy patterns. So they haven't needed as many, but uh, I certainly always have patterns in my head that I would love to make. Um, certainly would like to make another Han Fu pattern because there's so many different Han Fu styles. Um, I think we've already created a really good solid library of patterns. So it's sort of like thinking about what else we can add that is different and that is like versatile, but it can also be used for cosplay. So um, let's see, any other questions you guys have? Mm. It's just me talking nonstop. Let's see, Constantine or Scott is asking, what fabric would you recommend for Rengoku from Demon Slayer and Elias from Angus Megas Bride? So I feel like you could definitely, I would play with texture, honestly, because Rengoku 
and Elias, their designs are sort of flat because of the animation style. But if I was to make a Rengoku, I would certainly use some textured fabrics. I would, you know, like to make the flames, I would maybe try different fabrics to sort of create more like of a um, multi-dimensional uh, effect. And then for Elias's big cape, because it's a black cape, I would definitely absolutely use a tonal jacquard or brocade, something that has a pattern on it, but that is still black. So that that's what I think is so great with these fabrics is that, you know, you don't have to just use cotton or, you know, like whatever solids. Like I always try to avoid using solids. I'm always like, what can I use that has some something different, like either two tone or has some kind of a pattern on it or some kind of effect on it. So thank you, Indra. Um, I'm excited to see what you do with fabrics. You always are so creative with, with them. So I'm always super excited to see like, oh, she used this there. So it's really cool. Um, let's see, what tips do you have for stabilizing some of the really stretchy materials when sewing? Um, there are different things you can do. It depends on what you want to make. I have used stretchy fabrics, but back them with a non-stretchy fabric and then stretch the stretchy fabric a little bit so that when it's on me, it was like smooth. Like I made a corset with a neoprene, stretchy neoprene outer, but like a solid could heal structure underneath. And I just made the outer layer a little smaller so that it had to be stretched. And then when it was stretched, it was like completely wrinkle free. And it like mystified some people. There's like, how did you get it to be so like smooth? And it was like, because the outer layer was stretchy. Um, you can also of course use iron on interfacing or you could just stabilize the, so, the strip that you're sewing on. You know, like that's, that's the thing. So like you just have to think about um, what the fabric needs to do. And if it's like, too stretchy, it may need a second layer, even if it's the same fabric and um, you have two layers of stretchy fabric, it will be less stretchy, you know, than if it was just one layer. So there's different degrees that you can um, always play around with things, always make mock-ups. That's very important. Um, let's see, for the brocades, what needle do you recommend? I use a denim needle, but curious what you use. I like a ballpoint needle, you know, similar to um, using a ballpoint needle for knits um, and stretchy materials. It also works well in brocades and um, doesn't pierce through as much. It sort of like just parts the fibers. But um, definitely I use a serger with all my brocades because it just really helps with the fraying and so I, I like to serge all the raw edges whenever I'm using a fabric that is that frays very easily I just like literally after I cut everything out I will mark the notches inward instead of outward and I would just serge down every single one which goes pretty fast if you have a um if you have a serger it sews very fast so Let's see, any other questions? Brooke asks, are there more trims coming? Yes, but I can't say any more. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> that's all I can say. Um, but yeah, we have a trim collection in Joanne and we added some really fun ones last year. Um, and uh, you know, I'm always like, yes, bring on even more interesting trims. I did just review some trim boards and I, I marked some like that I really loved very obnoxiously, like just one. Uh, so hopefully we can implement them sooner rather than later. But yes, there will be more trims coming. <laughs> Any chance there could be a silver version of the gold stretch pleather? So we had a silver version at one point, the gold sold better and it is sadly not up to us which color they buy, you know, because they, like, I think you should have gold and silver. Like that just makes sense to me, you know? So every time I have presented a gold, I am always like, what about the silver? But 
it's in it's just like it's not up to us which fabrics they ultimately choose um we can make suggestions we can heavily uh recommend things and um i think at the last presentation i even went as far as like putting stickers on like my absolute favorite fabrics the ones that i really think they should get but you know they have so many other things to consider when they make the final decisions and i'm sadly not in the room i I'm like, I wish I could influence them. I wish I could just be like, mind control them. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, in case any Joanne buyers are watching, I can't mind control anyone. But I do want to make suggestions because even if like a fabric maybe doesn't sell as much as another one, it doesn't mean that it's not important. And I always like to think of the whole collection being well rounded and not just picks of the ones that sell the most you know so i think a silver would be really great and we will continue to suggest it um but it's not up to us so yeah uh let's see are you planning any new cosplay soon using the new fabrics i'm always always planning to use the fabrics always <laughs> uh it's oftentimes just like happens organically and at the moment i don't have a specific project in my head but it usually happens at like two in the morning you know and i'm like usually when i have to make a new costume i just go into my sample yard to stash because like i have a house full of fabrics and um look through that first and then i buy like complementary fabrics um but certainly there's a lot that that inspires me as well when i look at these um and i always try to incorporate whatever fabrics that that i can into my costumes like when i made lucy i was like how many different of my fabrics can i just throw in there and i think i ended up using like seven like lucy is completely made with my fabrics um from cyberpunk and it was just like well this texture but mixed with this print and mixed with this foil and this pleather so it's it's definitely really fun and i am very lucky to have access to all these <laughs> so um let's see jonathan's asking i'm a fan of dynasty warriors and street fighter games love your zenji and chun li thank you please tell us what fabrics you used uh so for zenji i did use some of my fabrics specifically uh, gold um, metallic fori stretch. I made it into an applique, believe it or not. Like I, I like embroidered on the four-way metallic stretch, which is kind of crazy, but it was stabilized. So it's like a stretchy fabric, but um, iron-on stabilizer so that it could handle the, um, the embroidery. And I also used uh, some of my dual fantasy dupioni, but and then Chun Li is actually made with a um, white stretch that we had years ago. I think it was like back in 2017, and I just had enough sample yardage that I was able to use it. And then my blue Ultra Cream, which was perfect for her pants. So yeah, Chun Li was entirely made with my fabrics, I think. Uh, so yeah, it's, I'm just very lucky. You know, like oftentimes I don't need to go fabric shopping because <laughs> I just go shop in my house. <laughs> but um, the drawback is that I'm running out of room. <laughs> so, you know, everything is full of fabric. So uh, let's see, Canvas Cosplay says, would love to see more variety in skin tone stretch fabric for more bodycon cosplayers. Skin tone, yes, skin tone is, would certainly be really cool. I feel like, I feel like, uh, I think Joanne already has some skin tone. So it's hard to present something to them if they already have something in their stores, you know, maybe in a different category. So we've ran into that a few times. Like, for example, the reason we don't make furs is because they already have a really solid fur collection. So they're not going to buy any fur from us, you know, unless it's like, really crazy out there um so they like to use 
uh, my label and our collections to bring out some really weird and interesting fabrics. So in a way, it's harder to sell them something that is like more neutral or more basic, you know, um, something like a linen, they're not going to buy from us. Um, or if it's like, yeah, like, like, I don't know if they would, buy, they've never bought skin tone stretch before, because I think it's just, you know, they'd rather use the slots that they have in the store that, that are allotted to me, they would use you to, you know, have some crazy fabrics like these, they'd rather have that. So that's, that's the reason why, like, as much as I would love to offer a huge variety of natural fabrics, it's um, really difficult to get them to go for it because they're just like, well, we already have something similar in a different category. Um, would you do any armor and mecha cosplays in the future? If so, what materials would you use? Um, I've done, I've never done mecha just because I'm just like, where, how would I transport it? And you know, I have to always think logistics because I do a lot of events. So whatever costume I make has to be able to fit in a suitcase. Um, but I've definitely made armor costumes before. I usually do EVA foam, but a lot of times I will cover the EVA foam in fabric. So a stretchy fabric like, you know, um, for example, the droplet. Now I have like this pile of fabric on the floor, but... But like I would cover it in a four-way stretch fabric like this. Uh, so it'd be like a piece of armor or, you know, like a whatever piece, but then it would be covered in this fabric that would be the finish of the um, piece. And I, I like covering fabrics or covering foam pieces with fabric because it, it sort of makes it, I feel like really durable. You don't have to deal with paint, you know, and then it's like, it's the, sort of you have the durability of the fabric and the foam combined. Uh, so that that's definitely a really great way to to um, make different accessories and armors and such. Mm, let's see. I have no idea how long I'm supposed to stay on, by the way. I'm just kind of chatting with you guys. And um, let's see. Felicia says, are you ex Expecting to perhaps see some of your fabrics on stage during the World Cosplay Summit. I feel like that would be so awesome. Will I? Will I? I'm really curious. So yeah, um, the trip I'm going on, uh, I think someone asked earlier, but I'm, I'm going to fly to Sweden first for a convention called NARCON. I think somebody was here earlier from Sweden. I don't know why. How are you still up? <laughs> it's like middle of the night for you. But uh, yeah, I will go to Nerecon in uh, Linköping, and I will judge a international contest called the uh, Nordic Cosplay Championship. It's um, I think they have thirteen countries or thirteen representatives from several countries competing, and it's really high-end stage show with all like immaculately made costumes it's all solo performances and solo performances are really hard to come up with you know to entertain the, the audience for like two minutes on stage that's tough so it is a very very high-end contest like people work really hard for it so i'm really excited to be a judge for the nordic cosplay championship and then I fly to Japan to judge the World Cosplay Summit, which of course is like the Olympics of cosplay. Uh, so this year they have 33 countries competing and each country sends two representatives. And they create a duo performance. And um, it, I, I'm just really excited to meet all the contestants and to meet the, you know, meet the teams, but also the, organizers and all the you know because it's like it's a cultural exchange you know I, and of course I'm excited to see what fabrics and materials they use like that is something I love doing when I'm traveling I'm always very interested where people you know buy their materials what materials they use and I do see differences depending on which country I go to or which region I go to um so I, I, I don't know if I will see some of my fabrics. I will say every contest I've judged in the past few to several years, pretty much every contest, there's at least one person 
that has something with my fabrics on it, which is shocking because I'm sometimes in Europe judging and I'm like, that looks like mine. And they're like, yeah, it is yours. <laughs> and I'm like, how did you get it? <laughs> You're in Europe. So um, it, it is really cool. So I'm very happy, very excited. Okay, so uh, Ashley says, Naircon is one of my top cons I want to go to in Europe. Yes. Brad is asking, are you planning to come to Comic-Con in Chicago anytime soon? Um, so you're talking about C2E2. I've been to C2E2 a few times. Uh, the, not this year. And I, as I don't have it planned at the moment. But I will be in Chicago next month for a convention called Anime Magic. So it's an anime convention. It's uh, in Rosemont. And um, it will be really fun. So I will be there. You can look it up. Anime Magic. Um, the third weekend in August. So yeah, should be really great. Okay, so uh, let's see. Amanda asks, you've done some amazing Genshin cosplays. Are you planning on cosplaying from Honkai Star Rail? Oh my gosh, uh, maybe. Not, not as of yet, not as of yet. I like, I'm way more familiar with the Genshin characters and the settings. And I feel like I would need to definitely learn more about Honkai Star Rail before I would feel the pull to cosplay from it. But, you know, it's obviously very interesting. Um, so you never know. Jahar asks, what do you use to attach the stretchy fabric to foam? Contact cement? So yes, contact cement is good for certain, certain attachments. So it's like the best if you like are stretching the fabric over the lip of something, and then you use the contact cement on the inside to, um, to attach the fabric. Um, but if you wanna attach a fabric and have the glue be on the outside, it's better to use uh, spray glue. There are different types of spray glue and you have to sort of figure out which one works the best for each fabric because there's some fabrics where the glue might seep through and show, you know, um, on the outside, like with uh, stretch foils, it can be that way. So I use a fairly lightweight spray glue um, on the foam, then I like slap the fabric onto it and then I use something like contact cement on the inside to really secure it. So the spray glue is more to hold it in place. Or I will sew the fabric onto the foam, like how I did with Camilla from Fire Emblem. I just sewed it. And um, if it's like thin enough foam, if it's two millimeter foam, you can definitely sew through it. And I find that sewing is an even better way to, you know, keep it in place but of course you'll have like of course a uh, a line so it's like depends on how you want to um attach it but yes i'm, I'm a big fan of spray glue <laughs> for sure <clears throat> let's see oh yeah there were two questions chocolate energy also asked it so sorry i'm like catching up on the comments <laughs> uh spray glue yeah it's it's good. Do it in a vent well ventilated area on a big piece of cardboard <laughs> and spray the, the um, foam pieces, not the fabric. You know, like you spray the foam pieces and you slap them onto the fabric and then you cut out the fabric around it and then flip it over. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to slowly wrap up because we've been on for an hour and the Cosplay Fabrics team, they are doing this in their off hours. So <laughs> they're staying up late in order to, to help me uh, moderate the show. So um, I'm gonna answer one last question. Let's see, I think I want to answer... Mm. Oh! Oh, thank you, Ashley. That is very, very lovely. I found two yards of one of your fabrics and have some of the Dragon Scale EVA foam. Very cool. Awesome. Um, so I think I'm just, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna probably end it here um, because for me to get through all the comments is gonna take a little bit. 
but I hope that I've given you a good, well-rounded look at my fall 2023 collection. Like I said, all the fabrics I showed tonight, they should be available in Joanne now or on the website. So please uh, take a look at them, get some yardage. Um, also, please always tag me. You can always tag Joanne. Their tag is handmade with Joanne. And um, always tag Cosplay Fabrics or Yaya Han Fabrics because that definitely gets, you know, like, it helps us to be able to show them how many people use our stuff, let's say that way. So because in the end, you guys have the power, you know, it's whatever you want and you, you buy that dictates what we're able to bring to the stores. You know me, I want to bring everything. I want to just have a whole store of crazy ass fabrics, <laughs> but um, I do what I can. So thank you very much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, and we'll do this again in the next collection. So and please tune in again. Bye. I'll see you at a convention soon.